Hey guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to do a sort of an update on my moringa trees, but man these peppers are looking pretty amazing. So we'll just like stop to admire. This one got blown down in a monsoon storm. I need to get some tree stakes and uprighter, but I've sort of been struggling with whether or not I should do that because I really love that windswept look, but that's not what I had in mind when I planted these trees, so I'll probably straighten her out. As you can see here, they are big. Look at that. They are all taller than my six foot block wall. I have my hands as, as about as high up as I can hold them, and this is over my head. So as you can see, I mean, I haven't taken a, a tape measure or anything to them, but they just go and go and go. And these were some of my smaller ones right here. And, and, and they truly still are, because when you look over here, these guys are taller than my hedges. They're just really doing beautiful. Now, the one thing that is a bit of a concern to me is all the moringa pods are falling off before they form. I don't know if they're not fertilized or what's going on, but they just keep falling. They taste really good. So I've been picking and eating them before they can fall most of the time. But I'm pretty sad because I really, 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 really wanted to make a drumstick curry out of them. Mm. But they are a delight. If you ever get a chance to eat them when they're the size of a shoelace, oh, I cannot recommend enough. Mm. Very tasty. Anyway, moving on. They are more and more like a forest than ever. But they have attracted some unwanted guests. And these unwanted guests are leaving scars all over the tree. And in some cases, like this right here, have damaged the branch. Sorry, my camera is trying not to. They've damaged the branch from poke holes and it just weakened it. I left them on because for a long time the leaves were still holding color and as long as they were photosynthesizing, I was okay with it. Now I keep finding these jerks of varying sizes all over. And in fact, I saw one just a second ago. There he is. Here he is, eating away. Let me see if I can get around where you could see him better. See, he's right there. My camera is not at all trying to focus right now, and I do apologize, but that thing is like three inches. Just macking down on my moringa leaves right now. It's really hard for me not to want to swat him out of the tree with my shoe. And I may do that later. Sorry, I got a bit of a blowout. My camera is just old and tired. Doesn't like doing this. But they're everywhere, these jerks. As you can see, there's another one right there. You see his dirty little ham hock sticking up in the air there. Mm, turds. I, every morning I shoot them out of the trees with a jet of water, but it doesn't really stop them. I think I'm going to start spraying them all with a little neem for a few weeks and see if that makes a difference. But as you could see, the view back into the house is obscured by trees now. They're blocking everything I wanted over the wall and they're giving great habitat to spiders and all kinds of lovely things. We have a somewhat wrangly, rough looking watermelon. I don't make any effort not to step on it. Uh, this is a volunteer watermelon. It was a Charles, it's a Charleston gray and it had a good football size fruit that I was really looking forward to eating because I thought maybe because it had been 
largely ignored out here except for monsoon rain it wasn't at all being cared for uh, that it would be extra extra sweet but it definitely was not extra extra anything it split the other day and I had to compost it so I was pretty sad about that pretty sad but hopefully trees like this one will produce delicious moringa pods that not only reproduce these beautiful trees and are more well suited to our particular area um, but also provide food for me and my family for years to come. I have really, really, really pretty flowers. They taste pretty good, but they're just a really attractive bloom. And they're in these long clusters and they're heavy and fragrant. And I just sure hope that I can uh, collect some seed pods. Mostly I just want them to form in fall. Hmm. I wonder if this dirty birdie is contributing to the poke holes in the trunks of these trees. I don't know. I don't know who's the, the culprit, but nonetheless, these trees are only about four months tall or four months old and they are so tall. I just can't even believe when I look up how tall they are. Let me see if I can back up. Oops. Let's see what's going on with this. Let me see if I can back up here and turn around and kind of just give you guys a, a more of a sense. Yeah, there's that wall. Six foot, they're well above six feet. And then when you come around here, they're definitely, definitely tall. Definitely a beautiful sight. I'm super happy. I look out my window and I see my mini instant forest. It's almost like shrinky dinks, you know. I planted them and bam, here they are. <laughs> a lot of these moringas may not be permanent. They're just the canopy layer, the fast growing canopy layer I've got going. Um, and some as other plants mature and grow will replace these guys. Uh, they're just so versatile. You can plant them tightly together. You can make a hedge out of them. You can grow them as an annual, as a perennial. They're just, uh, they're just a wonderful, wonderful plant. And um, I'm actually going to come out here and do a lot of leaf harvesting soon. I'm going to chop the tops off of many of the, pretty much all of them actually, and start encouraging a thicker trunk and heavier leaves you know, like more branching, I should say, more branching. That's a better way of putting it. I also need to chop and drop a lot of the bottom here where they have like lost foliage. I think a lot of it is due to, I don't know if it's underwatering, probably not overwatering, but I'm, I'm not really trying to give these guys a ton of water. They don't need it. Um, and I, I frankly, I don't want to give it to them. I have a lot of other plants that I eat all the time that I'd rather water. So these guys get five gallons each of water a day. Uh, it seems to be doing the trick. So, so far so good. We're okay with that. I will try to go outside the property and get a view of what they look like from over the fence soon. And uh, for now, I will just leave you guys with the view of one of the plants that I'm most happy with and that is this beautiful beautiful Bahamian goat this plant had some messed up curly leaves I was trying to figure out what was wrong with all of these in this row and it needed more shade and they needed more food and now that they have it I mean this whoo child they are everywhere I don't even know I'm going to make a carrot, ginger, Bahamian goat hot sauce tonight. I don't think I have the memory on my phone to film it, but if I do, I will definitely share it. There's just a beautiful view of um, my pepper forest in its little shade cloth enclosure and my beautiful, beautiful trees in the very beginnings of this four month old Tucson Zone 9 perennial food forest.
thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.